Hello and welcome back to Just Ride Bikes. I hope you're well, enjoying life and getting miles in on your bike at the moment. Now, this week has been a busy time for new gravel bikes and products. So a few days ago, we had the new Cannondale Topstone Carbon. My video on that is linked above in case you missed it. And following on from that, we have a brand new 3T Exploro Ultra with bigger tire clearance than the original bike that launched last year or year before. We have an interesting new bike from Time with a carbon fiber that claims to be really tough, so ideal for gravel when you're riding off-road with rocks and roots. And then we have a brand new suspension fork from Fox during the RockShot Rudy that launched last year. So it does raise the question of whether suspension on a gravel bike is a good thing or not, but let me know what you think down below. Okay, let's dive in and take a closer look at the new bikes and products. Let's start with a brand new gravel bike from Time because, well, you don't get many new bikes from Time these days. Now, Time is a French manufacturer, and it's fair to say their profile has taken quite a dip over the last few years. The pedal business was sold to SRAM last year, and the bike business was sold to an American company, but it's still going forward. And this brand new ADHX gravel all road bike looks fantastic. I mean, look at this picture. Wouldn't you die to own this bike? I definitely would. So Time is a French manufacturer and they're very different in that they manufacture their frames in-house in France and not made in China or Taiwan. And they use a process that's very different as well. Now, most of us are familiar with how carbon frames are made. Molds, bits of carbon fiber pressed into the mold, goes into an oven to cure, you know, out pops a nice carbon frame. But that's not how Time does it. So Time basically braids individual strands of carbon fiber into a sock-like thing, which is then put over wax molds to make the carbon fiber frame. The process looks amazing in this video, something like a futuristic Victorian wall mill. So really different process. And then to make sure this new gravel bike is strong enough and robust enough for riding off-road with rocks and other things flying up to the frame, they add a Dyneema fabric. Now, Dyneema is claimed to be the strongest fabric in the world, and we've seen it used by bike brands before. Specialized had it in their shoes several years ago. And the benefits in this frame, according to the company, mean they keep the weight nice and low, but boost the stiffness and their strength, which all sounds very good. And the frame weight is just over one kilogram, which is pretty good and a powerful of course for a gravel adventure bike. I think that Specialized Crocs is one of the lighter examples but you're looking at about 850 to 950 grams for a typical gravel bike. But this one has the benefits of that Dyneema fabric, so potentially should be even stronger and more durable and more rugged for this type of riding. So that's the material and the manufacturing of a new Time ADHX gravel bike. Other details to talk about, well, the tire clearance is pegged at 40 mil on a 700C rim, which these days doesn't really cut it for a gravel bike, and definitely makes it more of a all road stroke light gravel bike where tire clearance is 45 to 55 in some cases. So that really limits its pure off-road ability. We do have some nice accessory mounts on the top tube and one by and two by compatible. And you have the option of full internal cable routing in the handlebar and stem, but you can run a regular stem and handlebar and have external cable routing if you prefer. And then the price, where it's just over £3,000 for a frame set here in the UK, which is definitely top end spending money. But bearing in mind it's made in France, this manufacturing process probably isn't the cheapest because it's not being farmed out to a cheaper manufacturer. And the use of Dyneema probably isn't cheap either. So compared to what you can get for this sort of money, it doesn't look too bad. And I can't wait to get my hands on this bike and see how it rides and performs and whether this is an interesting option if you are in the market for a gravel bike. And talking of tire clearance, 3T this week has launched a brand new Exploro Ultra. So basically they're taking the race max from last year that I reviewed, link down below in case you missed it, and made the tire clearance even more generous than before. So now you can fit up to a 61 mil tire, which is definitely bigger than the old version. Now, when I reviewed the race max last year, I was generally impressed with it, the design, the performance, the speed, definitely very impressive. But the tire clearance and the mud clearance, as you can see from that video, was lacking compared to other bikes in this sector. So it definitely went for aero and speed and really compromised tire clearance in my opinion. 
So a 61 millimeter wide tire is massive, but you read into details a bit more and 3T actually says it recommends up to a 46 on a 700C. And even that bigger maximum tire clearance, you go down to a smaller 650B, which does make sense because a 61 mil tire on a 700C rim is getting pretty big. That outside diameter getting really large and you really have to start compromising the geometry of a gravel bike and you might be at a point where you would be better off on a mountain bike. But with space for up to a 46 mil wide tire on a 700C rim, that's a big improvement on the old bike. So if you run a 42 or a 44 mil wide tire, say, you should have plenty of clearance around a tire and a frame for mud to fall through. To make these improvements in tire clearance, they've modified the frame in a few places. So the fork blades are now wider. The down tube is actually narrower by 10 mil than the old version, 50 over 60. And the wall base is a bit longer, which might slow down the handling a bit, might impact the speed feeling of that bike. But hopefully I'll get a chance to ride one and see how it compares to the old bike and whether it's a bike it should have been when it launched last year with bigger tire clearance than it had at launch. And the other great news with this brand new bike is that while you still have an aero seat tube, you now fit a round 27.2 millimeter seat post. So you could, if you wanted, fit a dropper seat post. All the rage right now. Got this one going on my, on that giant revolt very soon. So a dropper post on the brand new 3T Ultra is a possibility. So let's talk about prices. And well, it's not a cheap frame by any stretch of the imagination. So a frame set costs 3,000 pounds, about the same as the time I showed you earlier. And full bills start from 5,700 pounds. But how good does it look in a top end build? Like a real tractor off-road bike. Looks fast, looks mean. Can't wait to ride it for myself. One downside to a new Ultra possibly is the fact it hasn't been designed around a suspension fork, which leads us on to our last item today the brand new Fox 32 Tapercast gravel suspension fork. So back in 2019, I think it was, or was it 2018, I forget now, I reviewed the original Fox AX gravel suspension fork, which wasn't that good really. It was their first attempt and it's really just a cut down mountain bike fork. It was heavy, the clearance issues with the crown on certain bikes and the suspension performance didn't really work in that reduced travel format but this brand new 32 fork is a ground up redesign. So it's lighter, more clearance for the crown and a down tube on the frame and should hopefully be a big improvement and a good rival to that RockShot Rudy I reviewed last year. Now there's a big debate around whether gravel bikes need suspension, whether they step too far and you're better off on a hardtail mountain bike. And there are definitely pros and cons to both. But in my experience, having ridden a few gravel suspension bikes now, like the RockShot Rudy last year, around that BMC Urs LT right now, I do think there's scope for a bit of suspension on a gravel bike, which improves the speed, control and comfort without really going to that mountain bike territory. I do like the idea of being underbiked, why gravel bikes are so appealing. And sometimes mountain bikes can be too much. And while time testing might not show much difference between a gravel bike and a mountain bike, a mountain bike on a road definitely feels slow with a gravel bike on a road, it feels like a road bike, not much slower than a road bike. And off-road, with a bit of suspension, depending on the trails you're riding, whether it's single track wood trails or fast open gravel trails, that suspension gives you the benefits of suspension. So a bit more smoothness, a bit more control, traction and comfort without really slowing it down too much in a way a mountain bike can on that sort of tamer gravel. The new suspension fork comes in two travel offerings, 40 and 50 mil travel, which is more than the 30 and 40 of the RockShot Rudy launched last year. And I'm not sure why I'm going for 40 and 50 rather than 30 and 40, but I guess testing will tell which is better. 30 felt good on that one I reviewed last year. 40 might be a sweet spot. Any more than that, I think might be unnecessary and probably getting too far away from the purity and simplicity of a gravel bike. Inside there's an air spring and oil damper and outside you have compression and rebound adjusters and there are two dampers to choose from, Grip 2 and Fit, which are both borrowed from their mountain bikes and there are three tiers of fork to choose from depending on your budget and how much tuning capability you want in your fork. Where that original Fox AX fork from 2019 had a 15 mm throw axle and a post mount brake adapter, this new one has a 12 mm throw axle and a flat mount caliper adapter for 160 or 180 millimeter rotors. 
The only downside with this fork and the same with the RockShot Rudy is that the price is quite high. I mean, a thousand pounds for a suspension fork, whether a mountain bike or gravel suspension fork, is a serious chunk of cash. And that for me is a big hurdle with these forks. A redshift suspension stem is much cheaper. A rigid carbon fork is much cheaper and lighter. So a thousand pounds is some serious money. And I really think if you are liking the idea of suspension on a gravel bike, then it's probably worth trying to find a bike with the fork on it. When Canyon launched their Grizzle AL, they offered it with a choice of rigid fork or the RockShot Rudy suspension fork, and the price increase wasn't that much. You're basically not paying a thousand pounds for that fork on that bike, a lot, lot less. So that's a really appealing, really tempting option. Anyway, that's this week's roundup of brand new gravel bikes and products. And do let me know what you think by leaving a comment down below. And if you want to see a review of a gravel tire recently, then check this video right here. But that's all for now. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you again very soon.